Hey everyone, I'm Harris O'Malley with DrNerdLove.com, and this week we have been hit with just a deluge of stories about sexual assault, sexual harassment, and general awfulness from a number of corners. In my column, What Does It Take to Be a Better Man?, I touched briefly on one of these stories, and I want to return to it. And that's the story of Brie Larson and her encounter with a TSA agent who hit on her while she was going through airport security. And as tends to happen a lot with these stories, her Twitter feed then immediately got submerged in people who wanted to tell her that it wasn't that bad, that she should have been flattered, and it was really admirable that this dude had the balls to ask her out like that, so she should really be okay with it. And of course, there are the people who, when told that, hey, this isn't a great time to hit on people, threw their hands up in the air and had a tantrum and said, fine, I guess I won't ask anyone else out ever. And to be perfectly frank, if that's your reaction to some very simple advice that this is not a good idea, it's probably for the best. So this week, I want to help you guys out by breaking down a little about when it is and isn't a good time to flirt with someone. It's a topic I've brought up before, learning how to recognize and work within a particular social context. Now, I'm not going to give you a point by point, this is when you can hit on someone and this is when you can't, with the possible exception of not on public transport and not when she's wearing headphones, because this leads to fights that go nowhere and everyone wants to argue about what about this, what about that, what about this other thing. That's not very helpful. What is helpful is learning how to read, interpret, and work within the social context. Is learning how to read the room and what the accepted behavior is for that occasion. The more experienced you become, the more you improve your social calibration. If you've ever wondered why some people seem to be able to break the rules and not just get away with it, but succeed, it's because they are extremely socially well calibrated. They understand what is and isn't allowed in the circumstance. They understand how to read people, to how to know who is responding well to to them and why. And then most importantly, they also know where the line is and how close they can get to it without going over. And of course, being socially well calibrated is important to dating success because it helps us to recognize when hitting on someone is a bad idea. And a lot of it comes down to empathy. One of the things that guys rarely think about is how we look to women that we don't know. I don't mean in the case of, oh, well, I'm, this person's attractive and this person isn't. I mean the fact that we may look like a threat. This is something that I actually struggled with a lot in my early days because, I mean, come on, I'm not that big of a guy. I'm a goofball. I'm silly. I try to be a good guy, but I'm also bigger and stronger than most of the women I'm going to encounter. These women don't know me. They don't know that I lose my shit over the Porgs in the Star Wars trailer. They don't know that my Instagram is at least 50% pictures of cute cats. All they know is that I could probably overpower them easily if I wanted to, and that's a pretty good reason to proceed with caution. It's pretty understandable that guys don't really think of ourselves this way. It's very easy to look at, say, Jason Momoa and think, yeah, that guy could be scary. That guy could be intimidating. But then we think about ourselves and don't think the same thing. And this is because we have a 24 hour stream of the inside of our own heads. We don't think about how we look to people who don't know us. We contextualize our self image based on everything that goes through our minds. So all of our comparisons to other people, all of our body insecurities, all of our thoughts, all of our motivations, all of our fears. It never occurs to us that we might look like a threat to somebody else because we couldn't conceive of someone looking at us and thinking that we are threatening. And just as importantly, we almost never feel physically threatened by the people that we're hitting on. Yeah, we do worry about being shot down or humiliated when we're asking someone out or asking for their number, but we're never really worried about being beaten or assaulted. Women are. Since that's not a threat that we have to think about, we tend not to think that this is part of the calculus of women's everyday lives. This is one of the reasons why it's a bad idea to, just to pick an example completely random, hit on someone in the middle of the night while you're both in an elevator in an otherwise empty hotel. Yeah, you know that you're a good guy and that you're completely harmless. She does not. All that she knows is that she is in a confined space that she can't leave easily with someone that she doesn't know. And then there's the context of power. Let's go back to the example of Brie Larson of the TSA. Here we have a dude working a low paying, kind of menial job with the opportunity to meet a famous, beautiful woman. Pop culture would have us believe that this is the time when he should make his move and be a goddamn legend because it would make an amazing story. 
Hollywood loves meet cutes like this because they make for great drama, but in real life, they're really fucking awkward. It's that story that compels us. And in fact, think of how great the story of how you two met would be is one of the arguments that people made on Twitter that Ms. Larson should have been okay with this. And after all, most of us have had fantasies about being in a similar position. We root for the TSA agent to succeed because in a very real way, he is all of us. We all like to believe that if we were ever in this position, we would also have the guts to just put it out there and ask this beautiful, famous celebrity out. So if the TSA agent succeeds in a very real way, it's like, all of us succeeded. But then there's how it looks from the other side of the equation. There is a massive power imbalance here. Yes, Brie Larson is a beautiful woman. She is a celebrity. She has a Marvel movie coming out very soon. But that's social power and not something that is immediately applicable. The TSA agent, on the other hand, has very profound legal powers that he could put into play right then and there and completely fuck somebody's life up. After all, a TSA agent could decide that you look suspicious and pull you aside for a very invasive, very public pat down while somebody else goes through your luggage in front of everybody in line. Or they could haul you to a tiny little room to just ask you some questions and keep you there for hours, guaranteeing that you're going to miss your flight. Now they have thrown your entire trip into chaos and God alone knows what sort of consequences are going to come from that. And if you are coming from a foreign country, this is a person who has the ability to throw you out before you ever even set foot outside the airport. So if someone like that is asking you for your number, you're going to feel a lot of pressure to give it to them because what are they going to do if you say no? Is this agent likely to fuck with her just because she turned him down? Probably not, but probably isn't definitely. And for a lot of people, that's not something they're going to want to roll the dice on. And don't forget, we all know people who have gotten a little bit of power and have abused it in the most petty of ways. Hell, there are dozens of stories about TSA agents abusing their power just because they could. This context is important because it comes up a lot. Trying to flirt with someone who's at work, especially when they're in the service industry, means they are not in a position to respond directly or firmly with someone who's being rude or pushy, and they definitely can't leave. Hell. There are literally thousands of stories of men who have reacted badly in public places when women have turned them down. And it has ranged from everything from just going home and then blowing up their Facebook feeds or their text with a tantrum to actual physical violence. I've got friends who work as bartenders and waitresses who have been hit on while they're at work. And when they refuse to give a dude their number, he's gone to their manager with complaints. A pretty woman he liked didn't give her her phone number, so he tried to get her fired from her job. Now you, you're a good guy. You would never do this. You don't want to be the guy who makes someone uncomfortable when you're trying to ask him out on a date. That's awesome. But you also don't want to be the person who then goes like, I'm, I'm so afraid of being creepy or being rude that I'm just, I'm just never going to ask anyone out on a date. A, that's not going to help you. And B, that's missing the point entirely. Here's how you gauge whether it's okay to flirt with someone or to ask them out. First of all, do you have power over them? Asking out a coworker can be tricky, but if the two of you have been getting along and if you're the sort of person who can be professional when she turns you down, that's more or less okay. On the other hand, if you're their manager, their supervisor, or their boss, that is really not cool. So if you have the ability to fuck with their life, their job, or their education, then you really shouldn't be hitting on them. Secondly, are you in a place where the social context says that this behavior is okay? Is this a time when people expect to mingle, to flirt, and to exchange phone numbers? A party, for example, is a place where everyone is expected to talk with everybody else. These can be great places to flirt with someone and if you hit it off with them, to ask for their number or invite them out on a date. Same with bars and clubs. These are places that people go specifically to relax, to loosen up, to have fun, to mingle, and to maybe, just maybe, hook up with someone. Obviously not everyone is there for the purpose of meeting new people, but enough people are that it's considered the accepted behavior in that venue. On the other hand, there are places and times where socialization is expected, but flirting isn't necessarily. Classes and lectures, for example, are places where it is generally expected that people will talk with one another either before or afterwards. The same goes with a lot of meetups or with a lot of networking events. However, most of these are not places that people go with the expectation of getting dates. Now, 
You have to consider the context. There are meetups where people go specifically to make new friends or to meet single people in their area. And these are times when if you've been having a great conversation, it is entirely appropriate to say, hey, I've been having a great time with you. I would love to take you out for coffee. Or, hey, I'm going to this really cool event and I think you would really enjoy it and I would love to take you if you're interested. On the other hand, networking events are not places where people go trolling for dates. Yes, there are people who are socially very well calibrated and very good at reading people who might be able to pull that off. But the context doesn't say this is a place where you get dates. People who are trying to connect with you are doing so in the context that this is a professional relationship, not a romantic or sexual connection. The person who joins your network on LinkedIn isn't looking for a date. Now, I know that there's going to be somebody who, because there always is, who's going to chime in with the story about how they or this person they knew broke all of the rules and got a lifetime relationship out of it. And hey, congratulations, sir. You or your acquaintance or whomever took a one in a million shot and it happened to pay off. They were the exception and you can't bank on being the exception just as the fact that somebody wins the lottery doesn't mean that the path to financial security is to buy a whole bunch of scratchers. You may want to look up a concept known as survivorship bias. In the meantime, hey, Cool story, bro. If you're not sure of your ability to gauge the social context or to read the situation in the room, then the best thing that you can do for yourself is to confine your flirting to places where you know it's permissible, like online dating, like Tinder, like OkCupid. Meanwhile, you can practice your developing your social calibration in platonic situations. I know a lot of you are now saying like, well, how do I know if someone is into me? How do I know if someone wants me to flirt with them? And it's cool. I've got a episode coming up about that topic specifically. It's going to take a little bit more time to produce and that's just how it's going to be. If you want to speed up that timeline, then consider contributing a dollar or two to my Patreon at patreon.com slash drnerdlove. Anyway, if you don't want to be just another pushy asshole or another creeper who makes women uncomfortable, you have to pay attention. And to be perfectly honest, a lot of this isn't that hard. It's just a matter of stopping to think, to get some perspective, and to have some empathy. If you're worried that this means that you're never going to be allowed to flirt with someone or never get a date, then maybe what you need to do is focus more on learning how to become the sort of person that women want to approach. That way, at least you'll be assured that they want to date you. The fact of the matter is, is that your hard on is not a call to action. The fact that you're attracted to someone doesn't mean you need to hit on them, and it doesn't mean that you need to hit on them right then and there. The fact that there are places that it is not a good time to hit on someone isn't a crime against you and your boner. All it means is that there is a time and a place for everything, and on the bus or the subway or in line at airport security is just not one of them. Hey, thanks for checking out the latest video. If you have an amazing story about how you met your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, your partner, your significant other, I want to hear about it, so tell me about it in the comments below. If you've been digging the series, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and let me know. And if you've really been digging it, then consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash drnerdlove. Even $1 a month is a huge help. Meanwhile, books. I've written them. You want to read them. Links in the description below. They're available in print and ebook format. And if you do check them out, then be sure to leave a comment and a review on, on Amazon and Goodreads because it's a huge help. Meanwhile, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at, at Dr. Nerdlove. Join my Facebook page at facebook.com slash Dr. Nerdlove. Hit the Dr. Nerdlove logo to subscribe to the channel to get more every week. And be sure to check out all these other awesome videos I have for you. And I will be back with you next week with more tips about love, sex, dating, and just being a better man. Later.